Kanishka. Thanks for joining us here at Preaching Matters. You've been looking at 2 Corinthians and thinking through why Paul says, do not lose heart. Why do you think we might lose heart? And there are lots of reasons why we might lose heart. Um, I think in our culture, uh, preaching is um, almost ridiculous. Uh, this is the age of images, not words. This is the age of discussion, not monologue. Um, you know, this is the this is the time where we deconstruct everything. We're not very keen on proclamation. Uh, but I think um, as uh, ministers of the word, and as uh, preachers and pastors, um, we have our own kind of internal struggles as well. Uh, on Monday morning, you can feel like losing heart. Uh, you, you can feel that uh, despite all the care and prayer and love that you could muster with the help of the Holy Spirit for God's people, yesterday didn't quite seem to go the way you hoped it would. And, um, uh, and uh, though people are often very kind and appreciative, um, a little bit of criticism seems to have a huge impact on our ability to persevere in the work. And why do you think Paul might be tempted to lose heart? Uh, well, of course, if you think of Paul's relationship with the Corinthians, um, you'd think he's got countless reasons for losing heart. Uh, but um, he identifies a few in uh, 2 Corinthians um, specifically, and he really goes to the heart of the matter, actually. It's not his relationship with the church, first and foremost. Um, it's, uh, it's the spiritual battle. Um, and so he says in 2 Corinthians 4, uh, at uh, verse 3, um, if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are perishing, because the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. And so that's a terrible uh, spiritual reality um, that we encounter all the time. And we need to remember, I think, when we uh, do encounter unbelief, as we do, uh, that uh, this is the work of the evil one, um, the one who's been defeated by the Lord. Uh, but uh, certainly Paul feels the weight of that. Uh, then, of course, there are his own personal circumstances, and in 2 Corinthians 4, there's that long kind of catalogue. Uh, he's hard-pressed, he's persecuted, he's perplexed, he's struck down, not defeated, uh, but uh, in sheer physical terms, it's hard work doing this apostolic ministry and keeping at it. And uh, so that's a reason why he might lose heart as well. And then in chapter 6, um, he does so. He then does come to his relationship with the church. And he says, I've opened my heart wide to you, but you have withheld your affection from me. That's, that's a kind of crushing thing, isn't it? So, um, so there are all of these reasons that Paul himself identifies in the letter why he might lose heart. But the astonishing thing is, uh, at the beginning of chapter 4 and again at the end, he says, we do not lose heart. It's remarkable. What reasons does Paul give us in 2 Corinthians as to why we shouldn't lose heart? <laughs> well, um, uh, he tells us to begin with uh, in verse 1 of chapter 4, he says, uh, Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Um, and uh, that's where it starts. It's remembering that the ministry that uh, God has given to us is an act of his kindness. It's through his mercy that we have this ministry. No one has the right to preach the gospel. This is a gift. Um, you know, and all those words, gift, kindness, mercy, they're all uh, related words um, in, the, in the scriptures. So he's, he's uh, conscious, I guess, and encouraged that uh, though we have no claim on this work, yet God's given it to us. And what's the second reason? So uh, secondly then, I think it's because um, it's through the preaching of the gospel that uh, God works the new creation. This really stunning verse from uh, chapter 4. Um, For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Uh, and so... Um, uh, you know, Paul is deeply conscious that what has happened in his own life, that blazing encounter with the light of the risen Christ, that God is doing that in the hearts of all of those who are his as we preach the gospel. 
Uh, so uh, Paul says, we don't preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord. And as, as uh, we do that, as we preach the apostolic gospel, the light of new creation uh, takes place in the hearts of uh, those whom God is calling. Uh, <laughs> that's absolutely stunning, isn't it? Those are two really good reasons anymore. Yeah, there are. <laughs> Um, uh, just a little bit later in uh, 2 Corinthians, uh, verse, just uh, chapter 4, um, a little bit uh, further down, he says, With that same spirit of faith, in verse 13, we also believe and therefore speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. And... Um, uh, you know, here's, here's the point that uh, the body is wasting away, hard-pressed, persecuted. Uh, Paul, this ridiculous figure, making his way around the place, flogged, was chased out of town, stoned. Um, but he's not losing heart. On the contrary, he's speaking because God who raised Jesus from the dead will raise us too. That's three really encouraging reasons. There's one more. <laughs> uh, and uh, in verse 16 this time, let me get my glasses again. Verse 16, therefore we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. There is what we cannot see. Uh, we cannot see Jesus, who died and rose, who lives and reigns and returns. Uh, we cannot see the Father, before whom all of this takes place, uh, the God of all comfort, and the Father of compassion. Uh, we can't see uh, the Spirit who is doing his secret work in the hearts of people. Um, and uh, uh, everything that we can't see uh, is storing up for us an eternal weight of glory uh, that will far outweigh the hardships, discouragements that we experience uh, now. And... Um, uh, so, uh, so there's great, there's great encouragement uh, not to lose heart because God is doing His work, building His church, and uh, just as He defeated death and sin and the devil by His Son broken on the cross, uh, so He's building His church through the foolishness of what is preached and the foolishness of preachers. Kanishka, thanks for joining us here at Preaching Matters. Matt, it's been great to be here. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.